This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, it is a glorious Sunday to be with all of you this day. I'm Reverend Ellen Rasmussen, pastor of Brown Deer United Methodist Church, serving this community and beyond. My preferred pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I invite you to journey with me today as we explore come, actually come and learn, and the powerful impact that these words have had on my life, and I hope you find them impactful for you as well. We give thanks for a God who is with us at every moment, with every day, with every breath, with every sacred and holy tear, a God who loves us beyond measure, a God who seeks us and wants to break through in our lives. And so would you pray with me our breakthrough prayer? Breakthrough to us, ever-creating God, I say again, breakthrough. You who are creating in and through us a new beloved community, transform our whatevers of resistance into the holy whatevers of justice, healing, and hope. Empowered by your immeasurable love and grace, let us do more than we can possibly ask or imagine through Christ who strengthens us for this adventure and the beloved, cherished children of God. Shout Amen. I invite us to a time of centering as we sing, Come. Now is the time to worship, and the lyrics will be on the screen. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us a, a desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ the Lord, and the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. Would you welcome our young disciples forward as we sing the first verse of Jesus Loves Me. It is a joy to be with you 
And today is a very special Sunday for me because I'm sharing a part of you know, my faith journey. Because there was a time when I didn't believe in God, and I've shared that with you, right? And God said, come. And it wasn't just come and figure it out on your own. God said, come and learn. And where we learn from is the Bible. Now, this is my first hard-covered Bible that I got for myself as an adult. Uh, yet, yes, I like color. <laughs> And I like to write in my Bible, and I like to take notes, and I like to highlight things. So you can do the same in your Bible. Here's some green. Right? See that? But we know that this is an, uh, a tool that we can use to learn from. Because if we go to the longest chapter in the Bible, do you have any idea what that is? What's the longest chapter? You're right, it's Psalm 119. And it has 168 verses. That's a lot. But I want to share with you verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. And one of the things I find really exciting in reading the Bible is that it's a new story in some ways every time I read it. There's more that I learn. There's more that I connect to. And I hope in your journey, because and have uh, Bibles that are appropriate to you at your age level and your reading level, and to have more than one Bible. Uh, I probably have too many, <laughs> but I find that each of the Bibles I have serves a special role in my life and in my discipleship. And so I'm hoping that you can uh, find joy, that you can find connection, that you find the Bible helps you along your journey. I learned a number of years ago, I heard, well, I heard a definition for the Bible. B-I-B-L-E, right? Basic instructions before leaving earth. So I hope that as you journey, as people you read and people share stories with you, I hope you find that the Bible is a useful tool for you and that along your adventure, God reveals many glorious things. Would you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for Jesus who shows us the way. Thank you for the Bible. Words to learn from. Thank you for life that you've gifted us. Thank you for love that binds us all together. And then the beloved, cherished children of God shout, Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from the gospel of, of Mark, which is the first gospel that I read as an adult. That's how I met Jesus, a chaplain who saw some uh, gifts in me, who saw a, a desire to connect with the holy and sacred. When I had my conversion experience said, read the gospel of Mark. It's the shortest. Well, it is, and so we read our gospel lesson today from Mark, from the first chapter. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. 
When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, growing up, I never imagined the power that one word could have on someone's life or my life. I knew words had power. They can lift up and restore. They can tear down and destroy. They can unite or divide. They can transform for good or evil. Words have power. We give words power in our lives. We give words meaning. We use words to give meaning to our life. Four letters, C, O, M, and E, combined transformed my life. It was an invocation, invitation from God to come. And I have never been the same. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day and for this opportunity to bring honor, glory, and praise to you. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us, helping us to open our hearts, minds, and souls to receive you this day. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And together, the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. In the Gospel of John, it opens with, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is Jesus, and my Word is come. On July 19, 1997, sitting in a business convention, I went from not believing in God, blaspheming God, saying terrible things, about God. I tried not to make fun of those who believed, but I'm sure I did. I had no reason to think that a holy, sacred God, a God of love, existed. And I had been resistant for decades. But in a moment, without coercion, without force, God broke through with one word. God said, come. And it wasn't a commanding come. It wasn't a, a, you know, do it or lose it kind of come. It wasn't you better or something bad's going to happen kind of tone. It was loving. It was warm. It was inviting. It was come. And in that moment of accepting that invitation to come, I knew that God was real. I knew that Jesus was real. In fact, I think the phrase I remembered hearing in my head was, Jesus is mine, and I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm who, uh, supposed to be who I am. And God was inviting me to be something greater. And what I learned later on is God was inviting me to heal. God was inviting me to grow into the person God had created me to be. And it, the, so the invitation was come, and it was warm and welcoming, you know, those warm fuzzies, that great hug. And it didn't stop there. While the come was gentle and open, what came next was just this hunger, this incredible desire to learn more to learn about Jesus and his love. And so when I got home from Dallas, I had to track down the chaplain who had predicted that I was going to have this huge spiritual awakening and it would be bold and beautiful and powerful. And so I tracked him. He was no longer in Tennessee. He was now in Ohio. But I found him and I called him and I said, Chaplain Ellis, it's Ellen Rasmussen. 
I don't know if you'll remember me, but it's happened. And he said, what's happened? And I said, I believe in God. And he said, okay. And I said, I don't know what to do. And he said, okay. Do you still have that Bible that I sent you, or that I gave to you? And I said, yes. And he said, read it. Start with the Gospel of Mark. It's the shortest. shortest. Then you can read the other Gospels. And I think he could hear the urgency and the hunger in my voice because he said, you can read the rest of the New Testament and you might, uh, you could read Psalms and Proverbs too. I'm like, okay. And then he said, I'll send you some other books, books about learning what it means to be Christian just by reading 15 minutes a day. And so I had the Bible that he had given me, and I started reading and reading and reading. I couldn't get enough. There wasn't much I really understood, but it was, I was just being pushed, led, to connect with the story. And so I read and I read and I read. And in reading um, from the Gospel of Mark, I learned that Jesus was a teacher, a preacher, and a healer, and that all sorts of people were invited to be healed. People were coming to him to experience something new, to be whole again, to have new life. And he was teaching to all these people, 5,000 plus. And then I heard stories about feeding people and connecting people. And I thought, wow, he's amazing. And when I went to the Psalms, I learned that from the psalmist that God could pull me out of a muck in the mire. I just needed to believe. I need to be open to God's healing power. And when I was reading in Isaiah, I learned that I was precious and honored in God's sight. And I was loved. I was cherished. And when I was reading in Philippians, I finally learned that I could choose whatever I thought about. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, think of these things. And I really began to hear God's voice in my head instead of those who had caused me harm, go, those who had caused ill will, those who tried to oppress and hold me back. I discovered freedom and life in the word So I had this invitation to come. And in that moment, I knew my life was transformed. I knew I was different when I said yes. I had no idea it would lead me to becoming a pastor and serving others and telling the Jesus story and inviting others to come so that they might have life and have it abundantly. In the resurrection story, I learned that Jesus came through death and had new life. And I learned that was a possibility for me as well. As a survivor of domestic violence, putting the pieces of my life back together was quite a journey. Coupled with the unexpected death of both my parents in just a little over a year's time, who, was, who were my life support, in my recovery, I was broken. I was in so much pain. And I needed to heal, and I didn't know how. But God did. God said, come. And so I invite you to come. Come and learn the stories of Jesus and his love. Learn how Jesus has experienced much of what we have, that Jesus goes before us and prepares a way, that God calls 
each of us to come to learn to be loved, to be made whole. So come, Jesus says, come, let me show you a new life. Come, let me love you. And as Methodists, we understand this invitation invites us to a journey. We, John Wesley called it Christian perfection, but it's a journey to be made whole, to be made complete in God's love. And we don't do it alone. We do it in faith, a faith community. And so come, come, come and be loved. And the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, creator of the universe, giver of life, giver of breath. We give you thanks for the gift of this day. We give you thanks that you continue to call each and every one by name, that you have a path for all of us to follow, and it may look different for each and every one. You are a God who calls us to heal. And as we heal, you're a God who, who continues to invite us to grow, to grow our capacity for love. And as we grow our capacity for love and we are healed, we, come, we become beacons of hope. We know that many are hurting and afraid at this time. There's great uncertainty and anxiety. And we ask for your spirit of peace to be upon everyone, the peace that transcends understanding, the peace that helps us to trust in you. We pray for the spirit of wisdom in the choices that we make, in the choices that our leaders make. We pray that we may be focused on the greater good, that we may be willing to serve each other in love, that we choose to be safer at home and that we protect our siblings, our neighbors. We do that all that we can to provide necessary resources in the areas that are hardest hit. Most of all, we continue to pray for you are breaking through, showing us a new way. You broke through in Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, and so we pray that prayer in the version closest to our hearts as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. As disciples of the risen Lord, one of the opportunities that we got to show how generous God is with us is by sharing from what God supplies. God supplies us in ways beyond measure, but financially we have gifts that we can share. And for those who are able uh, to have extra, bless, uh, extra gifts to share, we invite you to, to share with Brown Deer United Methodist Church so that we can continue to serve the communities and beyond so that we are there for those in need. 
so that we continue to spread the word of Jesus and his love as we serve as agents of justice, healing, and hope for a broken and hurting world. Come, 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 be an agent, bring hope. And the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. I invite you to sing our closing hymn. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. It's You Are Mine. Come, God said. Learn, Jesus called. Stay, said the Spirit. You are loved. You are cherished. You are mine. This is true. Go, therefore, and transform the world in love. And the beloved, cherished children of God shout, Amen.